uh, colleagues, once uh, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, so, uh, shall we begin our discussion? Uh, because we need time to uh, take questions uh, uh, from the floor. And uh, I uh, hope that uh, we'll have uh, uh, not, not just uh, uh, the, a discussion, but we'll be able just to arrive to certain solutions and uh, certain, uh, 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 certain things that may uh, be the foundation for our resolution, uh, that the Minister of Health and the government, so we can, we can submit it to the attention of these two bodies, uh, because we have, come, uh, we have found common ground and uh, so in search of answers uh, to the questions that we're going to state today. Uh, so I will very briefly uh, talk about the format uh, and the timing of today's uh, uh, meeting. Uh, please, uh, can you give me the, uh, the remote, please? Uh, so our plan, uh, so, so first we'll uh, have this uh, opening. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Then uh, we'll have this good tradition, uh, so within the framework of Gaidar Forum. Uh, so we usually at the beginning of discussion make a key presentation, keynote presentation. And, uh, and uh, so I plan to allow uh, uh, allow 15 minutes uh, uh, for the group to do that, and then uh, after, so we'll discuss and uh, and we'll try to find uh, uh, answers to uh, the questions that we have uh, 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 at hand. And uh, after the presentation, uh, we'll traditionally uh, wrap up and uh, so make some recap statements. And as a moderator, as a participant, and as an executive director uh, of uh, the uh, Efficient uh, Medicine panel, uh, uh, so the Russian Academy of National uh, uh, Sora-Nepa, uh, uh, traditionally it's an, it's an, it's an, uh, it's an economic uh, higher education institutions that deals with uh, matters related to um, uh, governance, uh, governing, and uh, uh, and uh, within, uh, so then uh, Gaidar, uh, uh, within the Gaidar Forum, so when they s spoke about the healthcare, and uh, we spoke about the economy, uh, processes, procedures, the burden, uh, uh, so the, uh, the the population, morbidity of the population, mortality, etc. And so we decided to concentrate on this project. Uh, so those were the initial goals of the project. So uh, originally, so they went around the, uh, the the main the main the main pivot was uh, the uh, to develop new standards to increase efficiency and to uh, to expand and enhance and make more comprehensive our our attempts to improve the uh, healthcare situation uh, in uh, in Russia and uh, so we made uh, some assessments and uh, so then uh, my colleagues will talk about that in greater detail and uh, summing it all up. Uh, and so we're just coming uh, closer to the main subject matter of our um, uh, meeting. And uh, so we are developing a new model. And uh, so we need some statistics. Uh, so whether we need just to, uh, uh, to enhance uh, the, uh, the immunization calendar or not. And uh, so it's a very challenging question. So because it has to do with production of vaccines. And uh, it has to do with the planning of uh, 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 immunization capacity. Uh, and uh, the production capacity of uh, uh, and the how we're going to enhance to increase the list of the vaccines uh, and uh, what we need to put on the on the vaccination uh, immunization calendar so we need to uh, to to address all these issues and uh, for your reference uh, what we've been doing in the last year uh, so we have had a number of meetings uh, 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 debates uh, and uh, conferences uh, with the medical community and uh, so we talked to other stakeholders and uh, so we even uh, have held some meetings in the regions uh, uh, so that was the recommendation of the experts that we needed to roll into the regions and get their take and uh, go to the constituent units and uh, to go uh, to the field and because they have some additional uh, statistics that might help to find answers to uh, these questions and uh, traditionally, I would like to uh, uh, to thank uh, those uh, who uh, who participated and helped, supported us uh, in the organization of this dialogue with the regions. And uh, so then the uh, the uh, Ranepa project group helped us a lot. And uh, so we uh, have been very closely uh, involved in development of the model uh, of uh, immunization calendar and other related things. So, so Makarov, uh, some deputy. Uh, the dep deputy head of uh, uh, RANEP. Uh, mm -hmm. So as I was saying, uh, so we uh, uh, 
uh, please, over to you. So, uh, uh, please introduce yourselves and talk uh, uh, about the results of your effort, please. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, Alexander mm, uh, 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 spoke, spoke at length uh, uh, about the context uh, and the background of our effort. So let's talk in greater detail about uh, what we what have done. So the, the, the main goal was to develop a model that would include uh, algorithms of the violation of the uh, economic uh, burden uh, of any type of disease uh, existing. Uh, and the economic burden of the disease. And then uh, the second uh, part is to test this model uh, on, uh, on different uh, diseases. Uh, from the viewpoint of uh, chronology, evolution of the disease, the gamut of disease, implications of the disease, etc. And uh, so then the model has been developed. And this model has been tested uh, 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 on two diseases, uh, so rotavirus and uh, and uh, uh, and VPG, uh, uh, the HPV, and uh, human, human papilloma virus. And uh, so then the Russian international and uh, Russian uh, uh, programs and the uh, calendar of vaccinations, um, immunization calendar. So the main the main goal was to uh, uh, introduce you to the results uh, of our effort, our, our study, and the calculations uh, of uh, the of different experts uh, um, to give a general uh, 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 so uh, uh, idea of of where we stand uh, 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 from different angles. So how to cooperate, and so you welcome, welcome uh, uh, all the participants to participate. Mm. So first, I'd like to thank uh, the experts uh, mm, that have uh, uh, have paid attention and helped us support for your time, for your effort, for your comments. Uh, so, uh, so we talked uh, to the experts at uh, a number of roundtable discussions, and uh, and we had some uh, I and I conversations. And uh, we discussed uh, the, the sources of data, allowances, assumptions, everything. So thank you for your effort and your contribution. Uh, it's invaluable. Then uh, briefly, the model is based on, uh, uh, on, uh, on, on Russian documents, standard documents, on the recommendations of uh, WHO. Uh, and, uh, uh, and it's based uh, 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 so then uh, we studied uh, the uh, the papers, international papers and Russian papers, uh, the relevant relevant papers, uh, uh, and uh, so then the economic burden of the disease. Um, so we are considering the components of economic burden. So this is the direct uh, detriment, uh, indirect uh, social demographic detriment, uh, and uh, the and the worsening of the quality of life, uh, and uh, so all these components. Uh, so they are. Uh, so they're supported by Russian standards and methodology. Uh, so this is this three types of damage. Uh, uh, then, uh, then there are three components. So then economic damage uh, including, uh, includes uh, uh, so uh, treatment cost, uh, 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 screening, uh, 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 hospital stay, uh, so the cost of med medicines, uh, um, etc. It includes. Uh, uh, so, for example, acute diseases, uh, grave diseases, a short period of time, a long period of time. So, if we talk about the diseases with the, the so long diseases that last for a longer period of time, so then clinical recommendations are taken to are taken into point. And if it's uh, indirect damage, uh, is uh, indirect harm is uh, uh, so then uh, uh, mm, uh, so then people do not do not produce uh, enough, uh, not contribute to the GDP of the country mm, uh, because they are sick. Then the economic effect uh, uh, is uh, is manifested in uh, in mortality, uh, invalidity, or morbidity, uh, or mortality. And uh, so the economic effect uh, uh, is the loss of fertility, and uh, so then it's calculated as the number of unborn uh, babies. And then the uh, then the then the factor of the quality of life. So we've taken this famous. Uh, then. Uh, um, Uh, 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 then, uh, so we will talk about the, disc the, the description of the model. Then we'll talk about the the calculation of diseases, uh, so respiratory uh, disease and uh, and HPV, mm -hmm. uh, 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 RV, uh, uh, respiratory virus uh, infections, uh, respiratory virus infections, RVI. Uh, 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 colleagues. Uh, so how we 
uh, approach this model and the approaches we, we, we have made. Uh, so the main standard approach is the, is the calculate, cal calculated cost of one event and the number of events. So the cost of one event uh, or, the, or the burden of one event. Uh, uh, so we understand in, in a broader sense. Uh, so that includes uh, all components uh, uh, that we uh, uh, spoke about. Mm -hmm. And then we evaluate the uh, uh, the economic uh, damage. Uh, um, so there are tariffs. Uh, so there are tariffs. Uh, so that covered by tariffs. Uh, then the clinical recommendations, and uh, which is not included include in the uh, 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 free free support, free medical support, and the prices for medications. So then we calculate the indirect damage. So we uh, uh, our approach was around the number of. Uh, uh, of uh, a non-produced GDP contribution rate, um, and uh, so then uh, sick leave, uh, etc., uh, and uh, as a specific case, uh, the death, um, uh, which is mortality. So then, economic uh, 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 calculation of death case is as, as a number of failure to uh, uh, to generate a certain uh, GDP. Uh, uh, so starting from the occurrence of death uh, until the possible uh, life expectancy of a person if he had not died. Uh, and uh, so, and then the effect is discounted uh, year by year. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, the result uh, uh, for the calculation of the of the uh, mortality effect. Uh, so you can see on the slide. So the death effect, the death impact. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the second component of the demographic damage is the reduction of uh, 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 birth rate. Uh, and uh, so we use the uh, so the, we use the co coefficient of uh, birth rate, so number of born uh, ch babies uh, by uh, 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 women of the same age times the number of women of that age. This approach uh, allows to evaluate uh, losses uh, in the event of uh, of of uh, permanent loss of fertility. So, for example. Uh, so then the calculation shows hmm, 27 years of uh, age. That's a loss of fertility at 27 years. So it's a loss of one child. Uh, it means a loss of one child uh, during the reproductive uh, period. Uh, and then this approach can be used when you calculate the time of loss, uh, uh, the, the temporary loss of fertility, reproductive fertility capacity, uh, so during the uh, treatment period. Then uh, we ca calculated uh, uh, other indicators, a quali, quali indicator that shows how the quality of life changes, uh, quali. Uh, so, and, uh, so then one is when a person is healthy and uh, zero when the person is dead. Um, and then the next uh, block is uh, immunization. So the immunization impact. Uh, so we, took a, we take a, a cohort uh, of people of the same age. Uh, and uh, the next stage in each, uh, next uh, every uh, next year, so we calculated the burden uh, 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 with which uh, this cohort uh, uh, will have to deal with uh, on the basis of uh, of, of the uh, the uh, uh, of the available information. Uh, uh, so that's we talk about the age structure of morbidity of a specific disease. Then. Uh, uh, if uh, in the cohort, if we use uh, immunization in this cohort, so then the burden picture changes. So every year, so we can see a certain uh, 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 so good effect. Uh, so the burden is reducing. So which is which is uh, sum, summed up when we apply the method of discounting. This is the uh, effect of vaccination that allows to calculate uh, the impact per person. Uh, uh, when uh, in, when you uh, use uh, uh, immunization, uh, immunization. So then, uh, let's uh, me give you some examples. Uh, hmm. uh, so then, uh, rotavirus infection. Uh, let me uh, refer you to the uh, pharmacoeconomical uh, calculations uh, that we used as the the, the foundation uh, for development of the model for uh, 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 retrovirus infection. This, 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 this is the intestinal infections uh, uh, statistics. So number of rotavirus infection consists of two parts. Uh, so first, uh, mm, the statistically uh, evidenced uh, uh, instances of rotavirus infection. So the share, the number of rotavirus 
uh, cases. Um, uh, so with the established theology, uh, confirmed uh, uh, theology. And then the evaluation of the number of rotavirus uh, uh, instances uh, of uncertain etiology mm, and based on, on, the, on, the, on the basis of uh, the instances of the known uh, uh, eti uh, etiology. Mm. Uh, and then the share of hospitalization of rotavirus patients rotavirus uh, uh, patients, uh, gastroenteritis uh, in Moscow, St. Petersburg, uh, equals the number of, of the number of uh, hospitalizations. And then there are some uh, outpatient cases. So Moscow, St. Petersburg, we, we have taken them because of the availability of data. data. And uh, so we can do the same analysis in the regions. We are planning to do that, too. And... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so then there is some... Uh, so there, there's some error. So, but the error actually uh, is, uh, exists in the outpatient cases, because the cost is less and it, the impact is less, and the impact is less in the in the uh, so outpatient uh, cases. Then, um, then, then, then the uh, so then the cost of one uh, event. Uh, uh, has been calculated. So then the fact on the basis of the efficiency uh, of the vaccine, uh, so Russian publications, foreign publications, and then uh, the uh, the incidence of the virus, uh, uh, its uh, uh, prevalence, etc., and, uh, uh, and then the population effect has been evaluated on the basis of international papers, publications, and experience of foreign countries that included uh, 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 this type of immunization in their calendar. The main results. Uh, uh, so then, uh, so the the, uh, the the amount is is not there, uh, but uh, about six billion, uh, uh, six point eight billion uh, rubles uh, a year. This is the positive effect of immunization, uh, and uh, uh, then uh, so this considerable component is a direct uh, uh, damage, uh, uh, and uh, and the the majority of this burden. Uh, so can be overcome with the help of the mass immunization. Uh, so then uh, a calculation for per one vaccinated person, uh, so which is the uh, uh, num number of rubles per one vaccinated child. So then the, uh, uh, then the response is good. Uh, in 10 years' time, so there is saturation. Saturation. And uh, uh, so then uh, there is no need just to, to 10 years up to 10 years is enough. And so we, we can get the, be the best response to 10 years later. It makes no sense to continue observing. So then the population effect uh, as well. Uh, so that's another about 7% population effect. Uh, it uh, uh, increases uh, by 7%. Uh, so then, if uh, we take we take out the population effect uh, and, and we get more conservative result, uh, then next one is the HPV. Uh, HPV. I would like to thank the authors uh, uh, for the for the wonderful analysis done. Well, very useful. And um, so we learned a lot uh, uh, from them. Uh, then the approach uh, to the uh, economic effect uh, uh, is uh, can be likened uh, to what uh, 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 what I spoke about the rotavirus infections. Uh, so the basis uh, is uh, the, st the statistics of morbidity and mortality uh, from oncology, and uh, and they compared candelmatose and sin uh, sin one sin two. And uh, so, and uh, so, the valuations were based on the basis of uh, international, international body of knowledge uh, based on mortality, morbidity, both international and domestic. And then the main. Uh, so uh, the main. So then, uh, d demographic damage uh, plays an important role here. Uh, so then, the methodology for the calculation, and uh, so then uh, the death effect, uh, uh, mortality effect, and how it impacts. Uh, 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 birth rate, uh, so we spoke about that. Then the main results. So then the burden of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of HPV is about 20 billion uh, rubles uh, a year. And uh, an inconsiderable part of this burden can be removed by way of immunization. Then, but here, a very important role is played by, uh, by, uh, by the cervical cancer and uh, so then it's mortality, a uh, person dies. 
uh, and uh, so it's considerable component uh, uh, contributing factor. So loss, uh, uh, loss uh, due to death. Um, then uh, uh, demographic harm. Uh, uh, first, uh, it's a cervical cancer. Uh, is, is kind of a young disease, uh, so to say. It comes at a young age. Uh, 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 and uh, so this, this oncology, uh, a lot uh, of young uh, 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 women die. And uh, so the total number of uh, uh, deaths, deaths is more than 5,000 a year. Then, uh, um, and because, uh, uh, so it, it, it manifests itself at an early age. And uh, uh, that is why, and many unborn babies, uh, so 1,300 uh, unborn babies. And uh, in, uh, uh, if we look at the trends, uh, uh, when uh, uh, women have children at a later uh, age, uh, 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 and we can see that the cervical cancer gets younger, uh, and uh, uh, and the increase of an average uh, uh, cervical cancer age per one. So if we increase this uh, birth age by one year, it will increase this number by 1.5. So it will be already 2,000 unborn babies. But if uh, so, women uh, so get, get older to get to have their first babies. Uh, uh, so that, like in Western countries, uh, uh, so then that so this uh, the 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 increase will be even sharper. So the older the woman is, uh, the more unborn babies uh, uh, there are. Uh, and uh, uh, so then, uh, so then one vaccinated girl, uh, so there's uh, a very good population effect, and this effect for men as well, uh, if we do the uh, the total uh, immunization of girls. Then, uh, uh, so then remembering about the, uh, the uh, so future future costs, uh, delayed costs, discounted to the present uh, uh, moment, eight thousand rubles per. Uh, uh, immunization and unlike a rotavirus so we need just to look at things in perspective strategically uh, so then less than 40 years uh, so then there is a big reduction of effect uh, and so 40 50 years is the time horizon uh, where uh, when uh, which we uh, encompass and consider uh, all the all the effects uh, of the implications of this kind of disease and the main conclusions uh, uh, so then the approaches, the system approaches, and this model has been developed, uh, and uh, we uh, used the Russian international experience to do this model. So we have got uh, the evaluation for the rotavirus infections, very conservative, uh, because they take into account, uh, so then we're not talking about the uh, uh, intra-hospital infections, and uh, we do, do discount that. It's about 3,000 rubles. Uh, per one vaccinated uh, uh, person in rotavirus, and 8.5 thousand rubles uh, uh, per one vaccinated uh, uh, HPV uh, uh, vaccinated uh, human. Mm, and uh, then we want to, uh, so these calculations, so we want to extrapolate it, uh, and uh, so then add the original data to it, make it more comprehensive, and uh, so we're very much interested to uh, to touch base, discuss things with all stakeholders, uh, to polish to polish it off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, uh, so let me. Uh, can I get my slides back, uh, please? And uh, we'll uh, continue. Uh, my proposal to the experts is as follows. Uh, so we'll be. Uh, 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 going back uh, to the uh, researchers, uh, uh, and we'll be asking questions. Uh, and uh, uh, so, what what I'm trying to say? Uh, so, our today's task is uh, the issues relevant to this uh, uh, point. And I consulted a lot when I was putting together this uh, meeting. And uh, so, we want uh, I want certainly a task that can be addressed, uh, not something that we cannot address. And what I got, so let me put all the questions on the screen. There will be three questions uh, uh, for the discussion. First uh, has to do uh, uh, with the presented approach, to what extent this approach is good, fair, uh, 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 honest, uh, and uh, what it lacks, and uh, 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 what's good, what's bad about it. And how can we improve 
uh, this model. The second, what kind of scenarios of uh, providing vaccination uh, uh, the best? Uh, so the procurement, joint production with the technology transfer, uh, production of uh, uh, domestic Russian-made vaccines. Uh, so what's the best? And the third uh, is uh, actually sums it all up, uh, recaps, and uh, how we uh, the, uh, so this uh, so the national calendar process enhancement, what it should look like to uh, to welcome challenges. Um, uh, so who should participate in the coordination? Uh, what data uh, should be there during discussion? And uh, uh, so this is uh, before we just we start. Um, uh, so the rules of the game. I will be uh, giving the floor to, uh, uh, so I know who I will want to comment on each of the questions. And uh, so please, uh, uh, so those who uh, raise their hands, uh, so wait for the mic um, uh, so that, uh, so you'll have a chance to speak. Um, and I really uh, hope this a lively, for, for a lively, lively discussion and interesting uh, hot, heated debates. Uh, because uh, so we should not we should not be a mutual admiration society, uh, and um, and it would be great if we could get to a certain uh, level of some uh, some decisions uh, uh, that would crown our discussion, and that could be submitted to the attention of the expert community and the Ministry of Health. So how this process should be improved and formalized to, to increase the national calendar of immunization. And uh, uh, so we have only one more than, a little bit more than one hour. This is more than enough. Please, uh, please stay within uh, your time slot so that we could discuss. Uh, so let's take the questions point by point. Uh, the way it's on the screen. And I would like just to address the first uh, question uh, to the researchers um, uh, in, uh, in in the area of the model. As I've been uh, monitoring this project uh, for a long period of time, and uh, so there is a famous phrase: "I know that I don't know anything." Don't remember who uh, so the ancient Greeks said that. Uh, and uh, so, but uh, the, the way it goes, I, I know that I don't know, but others don't know even that. Uh, and uh, that is why, uh, so we need to uh, take a, uh, a wider look at it. And uh, there is a lot to be done. Mm -hmm. So that we could say that the model is complete and the numbers uh, can be uh, rep can be. Um, shown. So, can we briefly uh, ask uh, what you believe to be the new model? What has been uh, done before you? So, how this model uh, pushed us forward? And again, the second question, we are all interested in big numbers. So, when we heard uh, numbers per capita is good, if you are ready and you could share, so how much the uh, state may save, uh, so on the whole, if you are ready to share such numbers, so again, what's new in the model, and uh, some general data uh, for the country. So, uh, answering the first question briefly, what's new in the model, what we saw? Studying the Russian experience of pharmacoeconomics, uh, that uh, in, uh, we, we, they considered separate components. What we tried to do in our research is to uh, encompass the widest list on, the, on one hand, and uh, on the other, to be conservative and without, uh, you know, um, showing too high results, without adding up to calculate each component. So every work that I mentioned here was interesting, but Diakov's uh, on uh, the papillomavirus and uh, on uh, ca calculating the burden and then different uh, components of the burden and the demographic uh, damage. So we got this idea from that um, uh, paper. But uh, mainly it boils down to isolated components and uh, we calculate. But we wanted to show the comprehensive approach. And second, 
the further steps, uh, large number, yes, uh, enlarged numbers. So we can uh, consider the online uh, kind of payoff. So when we start vaccination, what are the costs and uh, what kind of the benefit we get every next year. So in this case, yes, uh, if we comment in uh, general for each uh, disease, for rotavirus infection within the next new year, we shall see quick wins, the low hanging fruit, uh, the lower mor morbidity as uh, the lion's share are the little children. So I promise to be uh, fair uh, and uh, strict. So please share the numbers if you can and answer the question, what's the burden for the state on the, you know, on the level of the country and the, if there is a price to pay so that we could understand the equation if we can get the balance. So the numbers uh, that I was showing at my last slide around 3,000 and 8,000, this is the discounted value for one vaccinated person. So when we vaccinate, uh, then you, we get this payoff. And uh, or benefit, and then we should look at the distribution by years. Uh, this is a burden. This is a burden a year. Annual burden. Yeah, I gave you the results for the burden, but this estimation for the whole population, for all the people, uh, for the for all the groups. But we shall see the benefits uh, distributed uh, uh, across the years because some of the vaccinated people, look, uh, for them, remember the chart I was showing you? Just give me the number. Is it efficient economically? Is it efficient to vaccinate the people? It makes sense to speak about the efficiency if we uh, deduct the cost from the um, um, benefit. In this research, we wanted to uh, consider the vaccination cost, the cost item. But again, the present market prices for vaccines and the prices that could exist once the vaccination is included in the calendar may differ. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. That was a provocative question. That's what I wanted. Unfortunately, you know, I was uh, I was late and I didn't hear the the beginning. Could you please tell us when you estimated the burden? Did you calculate uh, the losses of the state uh, from the sick leaves of the parents and uh, under uh, produced product? Yes, under produ produced product. Yes, but at this stage we are not showing separate effect for population and for the state. So in this case, the sick leaves, you know, and the payment is rather a transfer. So from the state to the citizens. So cum uh, cumulative number does not include it. But under produced product, yes. And the uh, components can be calculated as well for the state and for the citizens. And uh, what did you use to come to conclusion that vaccination is a provocative question uh, from the papilloma, human papilloma virus will reduce the uh, cervical cancer morbidity because there is no proof yet. Well, we are starting to get the proof. They will appear. We shall get them quite soon when uh, uh, enough time will elapse from the moment of vaccination in the countries uh, uh, who started earlier. And uh, certainly we are making admissions. We are we, uh -huh, that we are we believe that that reduction of pre cancer conditions should definitely manifest well how to say will reduce the oncology and uh, we also judge by one of the mani manifestations called condylomatosis that appears quite early and uh, there is enough uh, there are enough cases that uh, prove the efficiency of vaccination in this respect so reduction of uh, virus load 
So, if you allow me, I'll introduce. I shall be introducing the panelists, or I shall ask uh, to in, uh, the, 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 uh, to introduce themselves. Yelena Nikolaevna Baybarina, professor, doctor of medical sciences, director of Department of Medical Assistance to Children and um, uh, natal services of the Ministry of Health of Russia. So the question to you, I'll try to get another loaded question. So looking at the research uh, and uh, the conclusions, uh, so we realize that there is a challenge in, uh, you know, in the fact what data you collect and how you aggregate and how you study. On the other hand, there is another contradiction. There are diseases where uh, there is no direct effect or link because there is only uh, a theory that and and so we get such a strange construct uh, that uh, how a decision should be made do we need such a model so we are now uh, speaking within RANEPA so and there are so many talks about efficiency speaking about efficiency does it make sense to uh, waste time on calculation if the cost of calculation is higher than the effect we are getting? So what's your position on it? Do we need such a model and to what extent it should be granular in order to help you make decisions or just take the uh, uh, best experience, the best cases? Uh, if all countries, uh, you know, do it, so it, 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 it's obvious it makes sense uh, for us to do it as well. I think uh, the authors uh, for the interesting effort, definitely we need such work so, because uh, we also study the experience of foreign countries and efficiency of vaccination in those countries uh, and uh, and the efforts of our MOH experts uh, and my colleagues are here and they conduct similar studies and uh, estimations. And uh, speaking about the rotavirus infection, so according to, well, taking the current prices, which now correct me if I'm wrong, uh, so I turn to the procurement department uh, who buy the vaccines, but but uh, there are no large uh, purchases. Uh, so we vaccinate within indications uh, 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 at the cost of the budget, and mainly it's uh, children in the orphanages and some close communities and vulnerable groups. Uh, so we don't vaccinate, uh, so to, so to say, en masse. Um, but once uh, we purchase. Uh, we have the purchasing of scale. We expect to drop the prices, and we really uh, place our hopes in the roadmap of our producers who plan to localize vaccines in this country, localization of the vaccine, and then the prices will drop again. So far, according to calculations that we made a year ago uh, with a similar model, we calculated the costs on uh, hospital treatment, outpatient treatment, uh, which are very small. Uh, virtually, we only pay for the children uh, that are subject to the uh, law number uh, 890, and then uh, children under three years old uh, and other vaccinations are purchased uh, from the uh, pocket of the parents, uh, so handicapped uh, children and uh, so sick leaves. And other. So if we take the prices, the current prices, we understand they are too high. And uh, it means that the costs for, per va for vaccination equaled the economic uh, damage. But then uh, we need uh, to consumer, consider the human aspect. Uh, children stop getting sick. And usually uh, children, you know, they get sick at the very wrong moment. And uh, this is a real infection that actually kills weak children and uh, 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 we need to consider it, and we intend uh, to vaccinate uh, uh, for rotavirus infection uh, starting 1918 with the localization and lower prices, and the effect will be much higher than uh, we have today. 
So at a discussion I heard, it's not mine, that there, there is direct link speaking about the human uh, efficiency. So the, we have a football cup soon, and there is a research that's showing that the uh, winner country then for the next half a year uh, well, keeps growing uh, GDP uh, or at, a, at a higher pace, plus 2 or 3 percent. When the parents are happy, probably the family works better, and we can try to account for it in the model. I don't know how, but probably when with the happy parents of a happy child, healthy child. Uh, Mr. Agan Began, Doctor of Economic Sciences, acad academician of uh, Russian Academy of Sciences. So in your view, you have so many works. You have... Uh, uh, been doing economics and human capital. Uh, what is your estimation of the model? What's your take on it? And what are, what's the focus should be? Uh, if we just uh, consider the tangible things or intangible things that cannot be uh, controlled, uh, like quality of life, this index that gives you the total contribution in the uh, economic development. It is clear that the economic efficiency calculation is absolutely necessary before you make a decision. There's no second opinion about it. No matter how expensive it is, it will be cheaper than inefficient decision made in any case. So in the initial research, you should not, uh, uh, you know, trying to be stingy to save money. Uh, our country is special because overseas, if I want to create an organization, for instance, in the U.S., I want to set up a group that will study economics of the United States. For instance, uh, what, does he have a proper mic, microphone? It's, check, check the mic, please. So the right documents, hundreds of pages of documents, yeah. Uh, not, uh, uh, it's not what, what they call. Not the uh, 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 explanation why, kind of the due diligence, but, but all the procedures that this organization should in involve all the functions of the leader, the deputy head, up to the question if a woman in this organization gets pregnant. Uh, so who is she supposed to report uh, at what week that she gets pregnant? We don't, we, we're not even thinking about it. So it's all intuitive. So if you want, you just go and tell wh whoever you want. And uh, it's up to the woman. So, but here they have a very strict uh, algorithm. Everything is written down. If we look at the technology of an Italian uh, factory, each operation is described. So there is strict description. So uh, here you need to use a metal brush and the brush should be as large. After I make a, a, a node on this, uh, you know, uh, 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 machine, you need to brush it several, so many times. We sometimes we have we don't have an idea that we you just roll the wheel and get the the node and then that's it. But he there they describe everything. That's colossal money. If you go to an American. Co coffee shop, I guess. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so they calculated everything. This, this is the way I cook an egg. The egg should uh, be located here. The knife should be there. The frying pan uh, should stand on the stove. Should should be should be placed on the stove. Every movement is described. In this country, we. Uh, we, we, it, it, it will never occur to you to plan a coffee shop. So go to any coffee shop and, uh, and look at the organization of labor. It's the way you want it. Uh, if you want, they, they put the bread and they cut it the, the way they please. And the knife uh, is not meant for cutting bread. They use any knife. Things like that happen. 
and uh, that's wrong. And therefore, what's happening? We are not uh, uh, more stupid, you know. You meet Americans, for instance. I meet my colleagues. I do not feel that my knowledge is worse. Uh, I'm not more stupid. You know, you are uh, not stupid. But why their efficiency is three times as high with the same knowledge that they have and we have? Why? Uh, the difference. We bought their equipment. We purchased their manufacturing facility, you know, turnkey. But our efficiency will be half of theirs, though we have wonderful people. Our people, when they go to, to the US, they show wonders of efficiency. Several years ago, somehow we are not advertising good things. There was a research of entrepreneurs from the point of view of their roots, uh, origin, what uh, kind of nation, what nationality is most efficient. You know, they have many Irish, uh, British, Sweden people by origin. So Russians were the top descendants from Russia, entrepreneurs with Russian uh, 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 origin. It's surprising. How can you? compare an American and a Russian entrepreneurs, but Russians uh, in America immediately got adjusted and uh, got, uh, uh, well, and uh, turned out the best. We don't have tutors, mentors, so we don't uh, teach people. You think you read them a lecture and he will go and manage. You try to read a lecture how to drive a car. And so immediately you think a person will take the seat and drive immediately or, dry, or, or fly a plane. Uh, you cannot fly a plane after one lecture. So I was trained. I'm a pilot. I was trained as a pilot in both America and in Europe because uh, our driver's uh, pilot license is not uh, recognized uh, and in the US. And uh, the main thing was the skill, not the knowledge. So you may study many books and you answer all the questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, you visited, you attended many lectures. But the uh, main thing is how many hours you flew. If you want to fly at night, 41 hour of you have to fly with an instructor, with a mentor, just uh, uh, piloting under his supervision. And he will be telling you what you do wrong and how you fly. So they'll give you a helmet with a, uh, with a with visor, and you fly uh, in the daytime. You cannot see the horizon. You can see only the uh, sensors, the gadgets, just like as if you fly at night. It's you fly uh, 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 with the use of automation. So that's the skill that counts. And hence, you need to invest more in training people and then making the informed decision. We are not uh, training the people. So the efficiency calculation is extremely important. And uh, if you have a chance to make a model and thank God the situation is uh, not very formalized, you can, you have options, so you can create models. and. Uh, How can you doubt it? You should not uh, spare money. When you make a decision, you need to calculate all the uh, options and then make the decision, you know, with the best uh, um, information you get. So uh, this is a very infinite topic. I'll ask Alexander. Uh, uh, head uh, of uh, a lab of intestinal infection of the Central Institution of uh, uh, Surveys Agency. So allow me to comment on the first and second question. If I may get my file with several uh, uh, graphs in PPT format. So uh, Mar Mark Twain said, so there is lie, horrible lie, and statistics. And we know that the uh, models uh, that uh, estimated efficiency of vaccinations and uh, 
dissemination of infection were followed by a large number of uh, discrep well, well they, they were not accurate from two uh, to six times. So these were the models considering many indicators uh, much higher than Andre was showing today. I remember the leadership of Glaxo, uh, GSK, who tried uh, to introduce this thick uh, model. And still we see that uh, the error is very high. And uh, this error may not be even. It can be positive or negative. And there are two parameters uh, and uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, I uh, for, uh, that I want to highlight. So morbidity from rot, uh, of rotavirus infection is not exactly exact. all children get sick before they uh, get sick before they are five or six, but the ratio of hospitalized, but the percentage of those who need hospitalization is uh, approximately the same. And in in this case, we are getting into a situation we find ourselves in a vicious circle when patients in the regions uh, where availability of medical services is low, yeah. then we'll talk about uh, extrapolation later. So they are getting a double hit. On one hand, uh, they do not get the proper level of medical services, and they are not getting any preventive immunization because it's costly for the territories for where the direct damage of hospitalization is low because the, the children are simply not getting into hospitals. Uh, second is extrapolation of data uh, that we get in the mega cities to rural areas. So again, coming back to the provocative question, remember Mr. Sabani said we have 15 million of extra population that's not covered by mega city. The data we're getting in Moscow and St. Petersburg cannot be extrapolated to the rural population. My next slide. There is a different approach as well. So I'm saying that indeed morbidity is approximately the same. Uh, what does this chart show? The countries without uh, co-financing uh, introduce the national vaccination calendar, Russia excluded. And this is the level of cost in dollars uh, per capita for healthcare, so GDP and the share uh, of GDP that goes for healthcare. And we see that in Russia, the situation is not if the worst. It's somewhere in the middle. And uh, this chart is showing the attention of uh, state agencies responsible for the vaccination to the population. Next. Here, we smoothly approach the second question. May I jump? Uh, through the slide, uh, I forgot to mention uh, my affiliation. I work at the institution that uh, produces uh, diagnostic drugs as well as consultant of MSD company, uh, of a kind of a freelance expert, uh, uh, so part-time expert. So this uh, pricing policy of MSD in Russia is not constructive. So look at this slide. We can see that uh, here we have the retail uh, Rotatec prices for Russia and other countries approximately the same, so in euro, in euros. And GDP per capita is very different. And uh, it means that the pricing policy requires adjustment. So probably considering the uh, tenders, the bids, it's going really to be adjusted. But uh, there is an encouraging facts, fact. And uh, so then, uh, so as the cost of vaccines uh, go down when you when you buy on the basis of, uh, of, of, of tender, so then 10 percent, even more. So we need to address this issue. So when you do tendering, so it uh, the cost goes down. So then we need to look for uh, the decision-making uh, uh, people uh, uh, so who are responsible for the production of vaccines, uh, uh, not certainly on the basis of competition, not, not monopoly. And uh, that's my short comment. Alexander, Alexander, thank you for your uh, uh, contribution. Uh, so we're running out of time. So we're just we're moving over to the next question. Maybe uh, any comments uh, uh, regarding the first question? Uh, any anything else you want just to uh, to contribute before we move over? I 
So I, I work at the Center of Epidemiology, Immunoprevention Department, and I'm head of the Immunoprevention uh, uh, immuno, uh, prevention Department. So I wanted to uh, follow up. Uh, Andre in his presentation spoke that that's conservative model. I would call it not only conservative, but I would I would call it retrospective model, because it's taken in, it takes into uh, so then uh, so it takes into account uh, so all the tariffs uh, so which do not reflect the real price, the real cost of a medical service, and uh, so then they do not uh, take into consideration that children under three. Uh, need to be pro need to be provided with free uh, uh, medications. It's not taken into account. And now that the treatment is done not by protocol, not by, no, we don't go by the book. Although there are protocols for rotavirus infection, and we try to calculate the cost of direct medical costs. Uh, if uh, if our treatment, uh, so both the hospital and our patient, were done along the lines of protocol, and now the figures turned out to be much higher. And um, the, the, the cost turned out to be much higher, uh, so because they just published at the end of the last year. So this uh, uh, more impressive figure. So uh, these numbers uh, allow us to calculate only the damage done in uh, in 2016. Uh, so retrovirus infection harm. Uh, so these are 15.5 billion rubles. So this uh, differs much uh, from what Andre was talking about. Uh, so then the damage, the harm uh, is much higher. So that's why we need just to think not only on, on the tariffs and uh, retrospectively, but we need just to be guided by uh, different types of treatment because we need just to treat the way we need to do it and, and, and not and, uh, and, and to treat patients uh, not only with things that are available, but to treat things what the patients need rather than the availability of medication. So this is the, the order of the day, and that's what we're trying to strive for. And all these new protocols are trying to achieve that. So then the quality criteria have been developed. Yeah, so that registered in the Ministry of Justice. Uh, uh, so this uh, order just became effective July 1st, uh, uh, 2016 and uh, 2017. And uh, so Ros Drafnadzor uh, monitors the quality of treatment provided. So low mortality of, of intestinal infections uh, actually tells us about uh, a pretty good quality of treatment uh, uh, because the mortality is very low. So but when you calculate the economic uh, burden, you need to look into the future and not into the past. And uh, so answering the third question, if I am to answer the third question, uh, uh, we know that uh, now we're getting ahead of ourselves, uh, so we we should not just break the the logic of our discussions. Uh, so then we'll come to the third question later. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you uh, on the third question. Uh, so what I um, so then that these are the intermediary conclusions. Uh, um, so there is a consensus uh, uh, that we need to calculate, that the model needed. And uh, in spite of the fact that its accuracy, more often than not, uh, leaves a, uh, some deal, a great deal to be desired. But we need to learn to calculate. So then a very important comment uh, uh, that um, uh, it will be correct to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to respond uh, to, to uh, uh, so the, this model should reflect uh, uh, the the actual uh, the the actual uh, forecasting methods uh, uh, for the future treatment methods. Then there was this about prices, procurement prices, uh, so very sensitive issues. So we have moved over to the, the second question about production. Uh, so we spoke about 28-19, where we have expectations that there will be some more production capacity uh, uh, put in operation. And uh, so then another ar uh, arguable question, uh, uh, so that depending on the, on the procedure of, uh, uh, for procurement, uh, procurement procedure. Let's move over to the second point of our discussion. And uh, let me remind you, uh, so what scenarios of uh, providing vaccines are the most optimum? Procurement? Uh, or joint production mm, uh, with transfer of technologies or development of uh, our own medicines. Uh, I mean, vac vaccines, um, the, since we have a lot, mm, uh, we, we spoke about MSD, uh, 
Uh, uh, so let's give the floor to uh, to the head of uh, 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 CEO of MSD Pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, Marwan Nakar. So you are the company that goes back history 125 years. As I read about your company, you go back a long way. You have a great deal of experience in development of uh, uh, medicines and drugs. You're an international company. You are present in many markets. Uh, you're a huge company. And uh, so this question, understanding that you have this uh, this uh, this rotavirus vaccine, you have it. You have this great vaccine, and uh, so the question, which uh, uh, currently, what uh, uh, what do you see? Uh, what are the barriers uh, from the viewpoint of localization, local production, uh, because procurement is always localization. So, what are the barriers to localization, uh, and uh, what are the ways to address uh, uh, this issue? And if possible, just can you comment on on, on price formation that we spoke about earlier? Let me get the price issue out of the way first, and then I will talk about the um, path to localization type NIPs. Um, price is driven by volume. It's that simple. Uh, in many countries where we operate, we actually have very high volume procurement, and price goes with that. And that applies to Russia as well. The lower the volume, the higher the price, and vice versa. But uh, it's. Um, when you look at some of the pharmaceutical products we have, where we have ADL inclusion, you will see that the prices are lower than most countries based on the current methodologies that we have. So the issue is not price, but the issue is volume and not having an IP. So they all go together. That will be solved when there is an IP. And I'm not talking about MSD. I'm speaking generally here. I'm representing an industry more than the company. Now, regarding, I can hear myself, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> the, regarding the uh, path to localization or NIP uh, that requires localization, I, I must say this is quite unique to Russia and some other emerging markets. It's not what you see around the world, in the rest of the developed world. Uh, specifically, you see this in China, in Brazil, and in Russia. To some degree, now we're hearing it in Turkey as well. But it's very unique uh, to certain countries that, that want the technology uh, in the country. Now, um, it's very important to understand that vaccine technology is as high technology as it gets. Therefore, it's very complex. Uh, in fact, uh, we as MSD only manufacture vaccines in two factories in the US for supplying the whole world. We don't make vaccines anywhere else, although we have some ideas of localization projects around the world in very few countries, I should say. But currently, we only make our vaccines in two facilities because it's very costly and it's very, very complex. Now, the fact that it's complex, it requires high investment. Now, this investment becomes even more so if you have vaccines that are live virus and those that are not, because you cannot have them in the same factory. Uh, you need segregation if you want to operate a modern GMP facility. GMP means good manufacturing practices. Now, the solution to that, if you want localization under uh, a high investment, uh, it's important that there is a long-term procurement. So a company can actually invest, trusting that they will have the return on the investment. Otherwise, you will not have many raising their hand approaching to, 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 to take those, those risks. Because also vaccines are complex, um, the tech transfer can be really long. So if it takes three years to do tech transfer of pharmaceutical solid dosage, it will take five years or more to do vaccines. If you don't have a live virus facility and you have a live virus facility, you add another five years. So again, it's a long-term process. You can, for this to work, so you can avoid, um, let me rephrase, you can address this though by having a phased approach to supply this long-term tender or procurement. Meaning at the beginning you supply it with finished goods, once you do packaging, you supply with locally packaged material. And then if there is a decision to go into locally manufactured or formulated and filled vaccine, you supply as such. It doesn't mean, though, when you supply finished goods, you will have high price. I want to comment on it. It will be the same price for the whole duration. Because again, price is not high because you're bringing it from abroad. Price is high because volume is low.
In fact, localization will put a pressure on price, and I will address that shortly. The third challenge you have when you have localization is supply. Once the vaccine is localized, again, like I said, manufacturers only make their vaccine in one country for the global supply. So if you rush the tech transfer, and you don't do the proper experimentation to conclude the process parameters that you need, you might end up with a process that's not robust, and then you might finish the localization quickly, but then you have uh, quality issues later and therefore supply problems. So it's very important that you allow the localization to take the time it needs. At the end of the day, you will still have the product localized, but you will have a better process and a robust process and avoid this supply issues from the local uh, manufacturer. Now, because of all these challenges, there is a need for a balance between the depth of localization, especially if you want to go beyond packaging, which I understand that's the case in Russia, and the pricing process. Because all these countries that are referenced today don't require localization and don't have the burden of the investment that goes with localization and required here in Russia. So there is, a, there is um, again, the decision is what's more important, price or localization? And, uh, and, uh, and uh, in some cases, a price volume um, situation or agreement might be more beneficial than a localization agreement or, or, or a combination of the two, depending on, on the project. The last thing I would say on this is because, again, of all these challenges, um, companies like ours, and I know that's, that applies to others, usually look for local partnerships uh, because these are very long-term projects. You know, they go 10 plus years. Even the agreements are signed for that long, and, uh, and it's good to have a local partner. Uh, but again, it's very important to select the right partner with the necessary capabilities, not only currently, but also with the intent to invest to further develop if they wish to develop a state-of-the-art uh, vaccine uh, uh, vaccine facility. Now, I'm an engineer in background, and I started my career in vaccine technology transfer, so I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. And it is very exciting to do projects like this, but um, uh, they, they have to be well thought through. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so this we came out with uh, two, uh, uh, two recaps, uh, so talking about the price comment, uh, and so this is obvious, yeah, because now it's a, it's, it's a trend because price always related uh, to the volume uh, uh, and uh, so procurement. Uh, so and then that's why we uh, we need just to find the, the the right solution. Then another point has been made, but a lot of a lot of costs, a lot of investments related to localization. That's that's a lot of cost. That's a lot of investment. And uh, on this uh, cheerful note, I'd like just to involve uh, another participants, uh, uh, CEO of Ford, uh, 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 Forb, uh, Forb, uh, uh, it, it's involved in the development uh, 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 and the production of uh, uh, modern vaccines. Uh, so it was commissioned in 2014, Anton. Uh, so you develop and promote vaccines, Russian-made vaccines. So moving from one to another. Uh, 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 so, so this is the development of, of a domestic Russian vaccine, right? Are you developing any vaccines, and what what phase are you at, and what are your comments about the readiness of our domestic production of vaccines? At what level of readiness? So the availability of Russian vaccines. Uh, so, uh, so we are we are probably as smart at, as as others, but uh, so the devil is in the details, and uh, and uh, so we need to see what what it takes uh, to. Uh, uh, to 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 move forward. Uh, what is the scenario? Should we just uh, should we champions in all disciplines, or should we concentrate and narrow narrow down and concentrate only on on certain things that you need to polish off to perfection? And uh, and I'm happy that I participate in this. Uh, 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 wonderful gathering. So since we, we started to talk about uh, the previous speaker and an academician, uh, actually the way I understood the message, uh, it's not it's not to be it's not enough to be smart. You need to be well organized. That's the message I got from you, and uh, and this and this is this is true, uh, because as uh, 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 the the uh, the uh, uh, Mr. Marwan so, so spoke correctly. 
Uh, uh, so he, he said, so then, uh, so production of uh, Russian vaccines, what it takes. Uh, so all these, uh, 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 it's, it's three processes uh, uh, thrown into one, which, which, which guarantee uh, 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 so the proper production of vaccines. Uh, um, if uh, in the, uh, so if we can, we do not produce such vaccines, uh, so then we then we buy. Uh, uh, so and uh, uh, so if there is a is a domestic vaccine, so then we need to give priority to the Russian vaccine. If it doesn't exist, then we buy. And uh, if it's half ready, then it's probably joint production. And so what will should should be the ratio uh, from the viewpoint of state uh, uh, policy? So should we import everything? Should we produce everything? Uh, should we do it half and half? Yeah, so uh, how do we how we do that to so, to to involve our foreign partners to to localize in Russia? What's important here and the key factor uh, uh, here and uh, I don't want just uh, uh, to be representative of private business. I want to be representative and to act as such. I want to be representative of this of our state company. Uh, it's called Nazi Bio. It was set up in 2013. So the purpose of that company was uh, to uh, guarantee the maximum localization of the sources of immunobiological uh, 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 medicines in the territory of the Russian Federation. And uh, so then it's a joint production. We allowed for that localization falls under this uh, and, uh, and the local production on the basis of our own developments. I think that they are all important, equally important. Uh, 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 so international, local, half local. So these are the two or three platforms on the basis of which we need to develop our domestic industry. Uh, why should we develop it? Maybe just we should import quality vaccines and just agree on the volume of agreement, the price. Maybe it's easier. And uh, so then a new, there's a new factor of biological security that comes into play. Uh, even in a conventional situation, for example, we know that so all infections, so that's good examples that are that, that that are included in the calendar, in the calendar, and 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 reflected in the law on uh, prevention. Even the conventional scenario says that the that the that the major that the major uh, part of uh, uh, of the vaccine is, uh, coming to Russia should be con controlled on the uh, in Russia. So, but if there are any any special situations, untoward situations, for example, 2009, uh, so there was this uh, mouth and food disease, uh, there was this outbreak, and uh, so there were these outbreaks of other deadly diseases. All of a sudden, in Russia, and uh, 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 and and uh, so then there were some uh, outbreaks uh, uh, that, that uh, put uh, Russia in danger, although they did not uh, come to Russia. Uh, so in these cases, we, we cannot just line up uh, 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 for the uh, uh, so for the vaccines that are not readily available, uh, even if they when they come from abroad and uh, and in in the event of. Uh, uh, this uh, situation, so they need to be controlled, produced, and uh, available in Russia, because this is the biological security. This is the immunization security. Could it be joint production, our own development? These are the platforms that we need to base our system of uh, access to such products. Uh, and and we're, we're happy to work with our colleagues from Merck Dom from Merck with Merck with Merck. So we're happy to cooperate with them. Uh, guys from Merck, so are ready uh, to discuss uh, issues, uh, among other issues, of uh, deep transfer of modern technologies, modern vaccines, and, and technology of their production in Russia. And uh, so then our colleagues from Analek, uh, uh, so they already have good, Analek have already good go, good experience in doing that. And uh, so then we say what what needs to be done. Uh, 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 what what. What are the key parameters? Uh, what are the conditions, uh, key conditions, uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, to achieve that? So this one percent uh, uh, availability uh, uh, of the national calendar vaccines locally, one hundred percent. So this uh, at least. Uh, says, and then the second issue is quality. So all vital vaccines in the calendar should be Russian produced. Then, uh, then, uh, and then the quality. The quality is a very sensitive issue, and uh, so th this is where we have lots of claims to put it mildly of Russian vaccines. We know that uh, that there are many questions about the quality of Russian vaccines. That's why that's that's when we are under criticism, and uh, and uh, this is. Uh, uh, 
inadmissible. Uh, so then the quality of the product is one of the key issues in Russia. So when we talk about the Russian production, Russian development, so joint development, so then first and foremost, we need to talk about the production capacity that conforms, complies 100% to international standards. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. Uh, and uh, so then uh, GMP standards, they should be compliant. And this is the key basic point. And, uh, and uh, we need to use it as a benchmark. So 100% availability and quality uh, of production. These are the main points. Uh, which are at the basis of, uh, of of our cooperation with our Western colleagues, mm, uh, our partners, uh, and uh, with our organizations, uh, uh, local organizations, Russian, that are involved in the development of new new drugs, uh, um, biological drugs. Mm. And uh, if we uh, uh, if we work on this assumption, then I think that the policy in the area of uh, so guaranteeing so this biological security uh, will be in good hands. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so you just summed up uh, uh, instead of me. So then uh, over to the next speaker, Vladimir uh, Hristenko, uh, CEO of Nanolek. Uh, so it's a new company, 2011, uh, but nevertheless, over this period of time, so they have already managed to achieve a lot. And. Uh, uh, Vladimir, I uh, wanted to ask you to comment on the second question about the scenarios of availability of uh, uh, vaccinations. Uh, and uh, so then, uh, so, uh, from, so the, from your company, so you signed this contract on the technology transfer contract, and then you, and then you participate uh, in, in the calendar supplies. Um, uh, and um, so then you, you know what volumes and you're responsible for the quality so what are the scenarios are fair and uh, what scenarios what what barriers you faced because you've you've gone along along this road already what recommendations what else uh, needs to be done to improve them uh, thank you uh, I think that uh, since since we need to ask ourselves a question uh, so what the optimal scenarios for whom because I'm a Russian citizen so I have little kids right? And I, as a citizen, I don't care. If, if it's a procurement, local production, joint production, I don't care. Because as a citizen, I want this vaccine to be in Russia. Because rotavirus infection is dangerous. And then uh, HPV, uh, so you can contract. And uh, uh, so then uh, chicken pox, you can, uh, you, you, can, you, can, uh, you can catch. And if there is a vaccine, I want my child to get that vaccine, and uh, preferably for free. Because by, by constitution, all, all kids and all people have the right to uh, a free uh, uh, vaccination. Uh, 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 but uh, 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 so ca how to calculate, why we calculate, uh, so evaluate, etc. assessment. So because in any society, uh, it's obvious uh, that the vaccination calendar should be developed if there is epidemiology, if there is morbidity, morbidity, if there is a vaccine, and if with the help of this vaccine you can handle, can manage this infection, then it should be put on the immunization calendar. But when and how? Uh, so there's a full cycle packaging. It's a secondary at the beginning. So we need to agree on this. And we know very well that in the United States and Europe, uh, 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 luckily, uh, so variability is very limited. It's not hundreds of thousands of infections, because in the calendar of developed countries, so, so five, five rotavirus, uh, so then, uh, uh, then chicken pox, hepatitis A, meningitis. So oh, there's there's a limited limited list. This is what we're talking about. Uh, we don't uh, talk about some exotic uh, illnesses. Um, and then uh, for us, uh, as as manufacturers. Do you want we uh, do you want do we want to participate in this market as producers, manufacturers? Yes, we do. We do right as manufacturers, uh, because but since uh, there is a, uh, but there is no uh, there is no specific uh, concept how the, uh, the the immunization calendar should be developed, what it should look like because it's a long process, very expensive. Uh, and uh, so to make the full cycle vaccine and develop our own domestic vaccine, it's 10 years at least. 
And so then in 10 years, so we need just to start investing, make a decision, a development, manufacturing, production, etc., in order to bring this vaccine to the market in 10 years' time. And, uh, and then you need to know that it will be in demand. Uh, and then uh, you need to know why we need to have such models. For example, even if we agreed, yes, so let's say so, then rotavirus vaccine, we need it, right? Then the next question, uh, do we need it? Do we need it at what price? At what price? Uh, and so in what in, and in what uh, uh, volume? And uh, if we look at this this model that uh, uh, Alexander Tikhonovich, so one player, no tender procedures so will not change anything if there is only one player. And uh, so in order just to change the price, there should be several players. Uh, at this point, there's only one. So we're not talking about any tenders. We're talking about the direct negotiations. And for many countries, uh, that's exactly how it goes. Because uh, actually, so the, pr the producers of vaccines, they're a very limited number. So MSD I spoke about. Uh, so you spoke about MSD. Glaxo spoke about. So there are very few. So now Sophia, our, our partner. So there are Pfizer. So I know some representatives. But uh, so globally, uh, so so these are the main manufacturers of vaccines. That's it. And in the majority of the countries, remembering uh, a small, small, uh, small, uh, small number of players, those are at the end of the day a direct uh, long-term contracts between the state. Uh, uh, and uh, so in the state uh, in the majority of countries provides uh, vaccines for the population. This is the practice of direct negotiations. When we talk about uh, Russian production, uh, uh, Russian manufacturing, uh, uh, so but it would, it would say about the uh, responsible approach. So we, we need to talk about long-term transparent relations. That's what we advocate. So if we put together the clinical trials, you develop the vaccine, prove its efficiency and, and, and safety, then then the Ministry of Health as I will, will buy, for example, so 1 million doses at 100 rubles per dose. And that's what the Ministry of Health is ready to do that in 15 years. Uh, for this, when they just to, to borrow money, to invest, uh, to start production. And uh, uh, and then and then what, what will there be this vaccine against rotavirus infection or not? So no one will put his head on the block for that. And uh, so, but but if, if if anyone just wants to buy this vaccine, so they, we can buy it abroad and, and import it. Mm. So there is there is no this practice of uh, long term relations between the manufacturers and the clients. So this is this is unfortunately it's not there. And that's so why the main problem why uh, uh, why uh, 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 so new promising things like the, that's enhancing the calendar uh, so we're behind um, and uh, certainly remembering that uh, the vaccines that we have in our national calendar we understand the price and the volume of purchasing and it's quite simple from the point of view of procurement and production because the producer knows we have two million children born annually and we need to vaccinate them and we can forecast but uh, we cannot uh, speak about the long-term development of the calendar um, and one more thing about the model uh, one more addition. So there is a, a, an organization, Global Alliance for Vaccination and Immunization, in, uh, and uh, with government and uh, NGOs and the global WHO, UNICEF, and other organization under this umbrella. So Gary uh, uh, develops the healthcare system. Uh, in the poorest countries. And they made a research that among all the investment in healthcare, so the most efficient per dollar invested cumulative effect that the state gets is $16. There is nothing more efficient in existing in the nature. So speaking you know, about the question, do we need to do it? Yes, certainly we do need to do it. If there is epidemiology, if there is a disease, we have to. Doesn't even matter how much they cost, because anyway, it's going to be efficient. It will pay off. Do we need to, to produce all these vaccines in Russia? It would be great if possible, but it's not always possible, unfortunately, because even with all the scale of this country with uh, 2 million um, new babies born annually, it's impossible uh, to uh, make the full cycle of all the vaccines overnight. as. Uh, Marwan said, uh, so it's only two uh, factories in the world producing. So immediately they cannot, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, put put uh, p -p -p build more because it will not be economically efficient. They cannot guarantee the quality in this case if they produce too much. Thank you, Vladimir. And I have to ask you and the person the, who is the timekeeper. It's a uh, five p.m. sharp. Do we have another 10 to 15 minutes in order to talk uh, about the third question? Right? So, can we have a quick comment uh, from you on production? Yeah, the throat. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, no. Natalia Kostenko. Uh, yes, the way. In general, about the discussion we had. I agree completely with the comment of uh, Vladimir Pistenko that we really need to have long-term contracts with the MOH in order to understand uh, the perspective to the, the forecast uh, for purchasing of the vaccines. And um, uh, we could offer an approach uh, to conclude long-term contracts that are used by the ministry and uh, within other uh, three years, two years contract uh, within uh, the target programs. We cannot do it for flu vaccination because it's clear it, it keeps changing. Mm, and we need to buy, purchase those vaccine, flu vaccines annually. But the vaccines that we need for early age of children, measles or bella paratitis, it, it was much better. Uh, it would be much better in my view. Yes, it would be expedient. Uh, this is my comment about the production. And um, let me pass the floor for the comment to Nikolai, the he deputy head of the chair from of Sechenov Institute of um, Evidence Medicine. Uh, dear colleagues, I, I like the fact that at this uh, very serious forum, we have this specific uh, immunization vaccination discussion because immunization in healthcare, uh, well, is very important in healthcare and 21st century is the century of vaccination because there is nothing more efficient than vaccination from the point of view of public health and to remind you that vaccination is the most uh, uh, massive medical manipulation uh, it covers to, yeah many people and we need the uh, relevant approaches to estimation of socioeconomic uh, 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 importance and uh, what we heard uh, certainly the main components are selected properly pinpointed and the economic uh, uh, losses uh, and uh, demographic losses and social losses so the approach is good but the question is about the components that should be included in it and discuss so we need to discuss more in order to be relevant and uh, uh, so we spoke about the scenarios. I agree that vaccine procurement should be arranged. It's national security and uh, local. That's biological security uh, that uh, we speak about. So the national calendar uh, should include uh, mostly lo local vaccines. But I agree that the quality of the vaccines and uh, their nature and relevance to epidemiological situation that we have in this country. So speaking about the uh, uh, flu, so now a, uh, WHO and CDC in America, so it's four component, it's four component, but, but now we are using a tri triple component, a tri-component, but we know that B uh, a flu viruses, two viruses actually combined. So now it is important uh, today now to develop the new generation. Yes, we keep developing. I know companies work on uh, creating gene engineered uh, recombinant vaccines, concomitant vaccines. But on one hand, that should be comprehensive, universal. On the other hand, uh, it's something uh, that probably belongs to the, it's our dream. But four component vaccines should uh, be uh, available for us, for the, look, in this uh, Europe, America, uh, mainly use four component vaccine for uh -huh. and uh, speaking about our national calendar it is we cannot say that it's bad it keeps uh, improving and uh, I won't remind you how we included new vaccines uh, 
and uh, new technologies and new ways uh, of uh, uh, in, 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 of uh, administering the vaccines. And it's important uh, with expansion of the list. At the national level, the national list of infection, so regional development, regional programs. Regional uh, 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 specifics and uh, evaluation of economic efficiency and politics of va vaccine uh, pre uh, prevention immunization. It should consider local uh, capacities and uh, epidemi epidemiology. So it's important, and uh, we were saying, um, you know, organizational issues uh, are very important. Uh, so it's uh, along with the calendar we. Um, need uh, to consider the coverage, the timely manner of vaccination, organizational matter, because we have many uh, lost opportunities and uh, for vaccinating adults, children. That's a big issue today, coverage of adults. Everything keeps changing. Every visit, just like uh, overseas uh, uh, of a patient to a medical institution, should be followed by vaccination. It's a very important component. Why uh, a mom brings a child uh, to an outpatient clinic? Why don't you ask her, are you, mom, are you vaccinated in a maternity home, uh, at work, wherever? Um, we know that life expectancy is growing and same trend in Russia and protecting elderly people, people with chronic diseases. But when they get this pension card, why don't you vaccinate them? When you get married, we say rubella, very dangerous for pregnant. Why don't you offer? Why don't you test? So I'm just a kind of, uh, you know, uh, dreaming, speculating, but uh, that's a long list of uh, uh, opportunities that we could use and arrange for organizational improvement of uh, uh, prevention, vaccination. And uh, I want to express my satisfaction with the discussion today and uh, for the models and research that uh, have been done. I want them published because uh, today we heard, but where's the publication? All those numbers, data, maybe there is something to, to improve. Each model has deficiencies that require improvement. I think that it would help us, and MOH and uh, surveillance agency would like to have all those results because that's where we start uh, the substantiation in Ministry of Finance. Subst substantiate. what? What's the benefit for the country? Uh, that's where we should start. It's important to have this research, and I would recommend to publish them. Uh, there's a mag magazine that's called Epidemiology and Immunization. Long words. So, Irina, I remember you planned to make a comment. So, brief summary. And keep the mic here. So, what did we say? Mr. Marwanakar was commenting on the price, uh, definitely has to do with volume and the questions about localization. We need to understand uh, they in incur costs and uh, comments about uh, uh, procurement. What are the critical conditions that should be included in this scenario? The company should uh, procure and comply and on the quality. The quality should be absolutely vital for the uh, supply of the vaccines. Vladimir Christenko spoke uh, that the state uh, should provide transparent rules and guarantees of the order because uh, the vaccine manufacturers uh, uh, our business people, any business, uh, any production requires planning. And uh, transparency is a key factor of success uh, in order to make it possible. And again, we heard that by itself the production process is rather 
uh, tough, well, difficult, and probably currently there is no need to produce everything at once. And that's true that companies may specialize, and it's uh, we, we need to arrange this dialogue so that uh, uh, comfortable conditions, terms could be found for the uh, supply and for the price. And that's true. We had a very saturated discussion. And the third question, so it's kind of general. Uh, please, I want all the panelists. I'll try just to pass the floor quickly, quickly. Uh, so please focus how the process should look. Uh, we heard many things in the discussion and the reply. Who are the stakeholders? What should be the planning depth, planning horizon? And what is the order of this very process of expansion of the national calendar? Briefly, so with the uh, many, uh, well, the stakeholders, uh, uh, vendors, producers, distributors, because now producers may support me. Over 50% of the cost of the vaccine is the cost of supply. So the cold chain. Uh, storage conditions and so on, uh, it, it's quite costly, especially speaking about the life vaccines. And we have made a, a, a very important development. Uh, we passed new legislation on uh, uh, controlling the, the transportation and storage of the vaccine. So distributors should definitely get involved. And uh, we were uh, preparing, uh, we were getting ready uh, uh, for the next WHO session and uh, the secretariat report, uh, they say what well, Russia is one of the few countries where the WHO recommendations are not followed on uh, creating an independent group of experts on developing national calendar. And we have been talking about this group for the last 20 years. Uh, Nikolai will support me. Uh, Valentin Pokrovsky initiated this uh, activity. So uh, still uh, 20 years have elapsed, but the group is not there yet. So now the officials uh, develop the national calendar, but they are not independent. So my request, please adhere to WHO recommendation to set up an independent group. So I'd like to comment on the independent consultants con consultation group that will make decision on expanding the national calendar. Um, as Nikolai Ivanch told us, we need and, uh, the, 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 and uh, MOH need to uh, make decisions to uh, expand the calendar, to add the nosologies. And unlike many countries, Russia has not yet uh, um, set up a technical national technical committee. Uh, and uh, actually, the Minister of Health, Veronika Skorzova, uh, has already signed the decision to set up such a committee. On the 23rd of January, we shall have a special meeting in the MOH uh, where we shall discuss uh, arranging this committee, the participants, the members. It's going to be independent from the Ministry of Health, and uh, it will be headed by Leila Namazova Baranova, who is uh, working now and who is the chief expert of the Ministry of Health uh, uh, in the European community. She has this community. And uh, uh, the secretariat function that, who will prepare the materials and research on this matter is the Center of Strategic Planning under the Ministry of Health uh, Exercising Institute. And uh, so very soon, uh, we shall know about the composition, the members, and there will be the special instruction, the, the order the, to, to, to make this committee. So now watching the time, please, Marwan, uh, so speaking about the industry, are you ready to add something about the third bullet, about the expansion of the national calendar? Maybe something new or on the whole you agree with the concept that uh, there should be a group uh, in the process? So. The, menu, the, the, the producers and distributors should be the stakeholders, considering the specifics, logistical chain, and they should influence the prices. What in that process? Uh, or there should be an independent group of experts so that we spoke. Maybe you can add something to it. 
Um, when it comes to the special group, I think that's great. Uh, when it comes to making a decision on which infections to include in NIP, I think we should uh, differentiate the infections to include from localization and manufacturing. At the end of the day, this is a public health issue. It should be based on what are the priorities for the Russian government based on the population in Russia. That's step number one. Then after that, these discussions can start on localized or not, phased localization, or wait until fully localized. Uh, and that's when you really need to bring in producers, distributors, multinationals, locals, and see who might be the best uh, partner for the government or the local company to work with. Mm -hmm. but first step is concluding which infections are a priority. Спасибо, mm Владимир. -hmm. Vladimir, I believe that's great news. I see pharma companies started writing SMS messages and getting the uh, permission passes to the Ministry of Health uh, for the 23rd, you know. And uh, you see, for, for the last 20 years, it was kidding. But uh, finally, at the summit here, we hear oh, that we're going to get what we need, an independent uh, agency, transparent for, uh, for all the participants, producers, uh, um, patients, for everyone who is involved in immunization. If the decisions are made in a transparent, independent manner and supported by evidence, I believe this is exactly what's missing in the system. And the second thing I mentioned is the long-term relations. After those uh, uh, decisions are made, uh, then long-term collaboration should be built between all the participants. So there are not so many of them, and uh, therefore they are all dependent on each other. So they should uh, build a very good uh, uh, long-term transparent relations. I would like to say a comment about the expert union, or whatever you call it, at the federal level. But uh, in fact, uh, that's true. Uh, there is no formal organization yet. But for each problem, we keep meeting with experts and discuss both issues with rotavirus infection, uh, pneumococca infection, cocci, and uh, all types of infection. And that's a union or a committee, and uh, now we're going to call it a uh, union on vaccination experts. So it is uh, very uh, good. But I just don't know the technique, how, what, what should be the order. They because independence uh, should be independent. There should be no order <laughs> to create something independent. So the idea is to uh, to use Leila Seymourovna and some uh, leading public professional organizations should join together and create this union of experts. But it's important for everyone to listen to it then after it has been created because unfortunately, uh, by experience, we know that we write, we make recommendation, but uh, they are not always uh, considered on vaccines and use of certain vaccines and tactics of vaccination. Uh, this is an important thing. It's not in this country only, but uh, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, so efficiency of uh, uh, such a union. I see that that's where uh, you need to know if the union has to be voluntary, and then there should be an order and uh, or maybe um, instruction of the government, instruction, I guess, of the government, what was the formal uh, process. Anton, your comment about organization of the process. On the third question, it's uh, obvious that MOH uh, uh, prepared in the best way to create this wonderful council. But seriously, I would like to ask our ministry uh, that we call the headquarters of the industry uh, to include in the process of discussion, at least, of the future national calendar, certainly the industry representatives. Coming back to the question that the source of vaccines is the basis 
for creating the process, uh, proper process of biological safety uh, and security. So, yeah, next discussion is going to start soon. Yeah, so there is no time. Yeah. Elena Boyko from Center of Strategic Planning. I would like to compliment about uh, the ex uh, national calendar that the new vaccine uh, introduction requires both pharmacoeconomic research and multicentric epidemiological research. And who has the right and can conduct this study? State bodies or pharmaceutical companies? or producers who can make this study. And then we need to regulate the procedure and legitimacy because the results of this research will uh, be accounted for in this model and financial sources for this research. It's a very important detail. And certainly a long-term contracts issue because the long-term planning is the most important thing in vaccination procurement. Anna, very briefly, because it's high time we wrapped up. Yes, we are very happy that our work caused this. It triggered such such a discussion. And second, I wanted to uh, say, technically, our model is very conservative. We did it on purpose. The data availability about morbidity and uh, uh, mechanism are not always available. But by definition, it's uncertainty. It's a risk. And always in the economic research, you usually use the lowest uh, uh, estimation. So the numbers we gave here, we provided here, are super conservative. And uh, any uh, additions to the model will most probably raise the uh, uh, economic effect of the vaccination. And uh, we certainly wanted to make this tool public in order to for the, for the colleagues and experts to use. And as uh, this is a model, it, it's, uh, um, it can be uh, adjusted. Can be, you can use it for other diseases, other nosologies, and we plan to continue uh, filling the models with regional data. And uh, they wrapping up. Many people who don't do models think that once a model is used, the conclusions are more accurate than without a model. Unfortunately, that's not always true. The results of the model s uh, depend completely on the parameters you include. And these parameters are the content. And uh, the people who develop the model do not have the firm grasp of the content, just like the people who use the model. So first, I suggest uh, to put this model to a test, to run it by the people who understand vaccines, not the models, for the content. So the model should be published because the model has many hidden um, bottlenecks or difficulties. What's the system, what are the parameters. So I believe, uh, yeah, the model used the uh, obsolete data. Uh, that was about the model. And second, independence. We only have one independent structure in Russia. That's the central bank. And globally. The most independent structure everywhere is a central bank. And how? Uh, what is it created? By a number of organizations, the president uh, uh, has the right to appoint uh, so many people. And then uh, the Duma or parliament has the right to appoint uh, so many other people. And this independent organization. Uh, should not be under the ministry. It should 
com comply to the WHO requirements to be independent. So it should be created by the medical community. And uh, so we have, yeah, and so many people from this place, so many people from here, from there. That's how it should be com com uh, 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 set up. And uh, we have to be very cautious, very careful with the uh, health care numbers and indicators. Uh, so we, uh, out of 190 countries, according to the United Nations that can be trusted, the uh, health care cost in Russia, we are on the 114th place in 2016. If you don't believe it, go and see. And uh, uh, when so we're not at the top, yes. If we calculated the market rate, but you cannot calculate the market rate, you uh, actually should consider GDP by the purchasing uh, capacity. And GDP, $3.7 trillion or $24,000 uh, per capita. This is a high indicator, quite high. We are within the 43, we are the 43rd out of 190 countries on, 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 in economic development. But on the healthcare cost, we are uh, 114th. We are under financing our healthcare. Um, so, how many vaccines are there totally? You can count them with the finger of your hands. We need to be clear, you know, what are the vaccines that we need, at what stage of development. By 2025, if we cannot produce a vaccine, by 2025, we need to conclude long contracts. This is efficient. We don't have to have our own. Well, it's better, but, but we need to be very specific, not just some general. Uh, it would be good. It's, good. it's good to localize, but be specific down to the specific point. And uh, so we need, uh, as was, uh, uh, and the last uh, comment I wanted to make, uh, we need responsibility of the citizen uh, who are not applying vaccine. So the, we need we need to make them liable. Yeah. So for not using immunization of their kids. Yeah, because it's, it's not the way. I want to use the vaccine. Let's not use vaccine. Uh, let's speak about that. Let's take it onto the public plane. We need to be very rigid and strict. So everything that has to do with the health of the people uh, needs to be uh, uh, scrutinized. And it, it's, it should be a state and national interest and w that, that we need to observe. And we need to take it very seriously and uh, much more seriously than we treat it right now. Yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, so then the medical medical workers, uh, so the citizens are okay, so because they are ignorant. Yeah, but, but so the medical doctors, doctors, medical professionals, so they're advoca advocating abandoning vaccinations. This is horrible. Yeah, and uh, so this is inadmissible. So if we, if we talk about that, so then there is no hope. Uh, and uh, uh, so if, if, if even the medical, uh, medical workers speak about that. Yeah, so for you. Yeah, so, yeah, so, the, the, uh, so then the, the, the salaries went up 38% uh, of medical workers and doctors. And uh, 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 so, so, the, the, so this is why so doctor, doctor salaries are still very low, very low. So, and we need to understand. Uh, and uh, uh, so then uh, I'm not going just to sum up the results. And uh, so we're going just to work on our resolution. Thank you very much, all participants of the discussion, for your contribution, for your, for your inputs. Uh, we'll definitely continue to work in the same vein and work on our task on hand. Thank you.